In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Son. Today is Whit Sunday, which is the, in fact, a more important feast in the church year than Christmas. Christmas is certainly better known. Christmas governs a whole season. Whit Sunday doesn't actually govern the season, except this coming week, where, which is, will be uh, an octave. Every Mass is, is, a little, is a first class, and every Mass is, um, is a, there's a special Mass for every day, like during the, the week after Easter, and like during Lent. Um, that's a sign of the importance of Whit Sunday. The occasion, of course, is the, the coming down of the Holy Ghost. Our Lord has ascended to heaven ten days ago, and uh, the Holy Ghost is, is coming down in visible form to what our Lord said uh, is take, his, take our Lord's place. Our Lord said, I'm leaving you now, but I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. And that's one of the sentences in, this, in today's Gospel. Um, These things have I spoken to you, abiding with you, but the parable of the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. In other words, the Holy Ghost is in a manner, in a human manner of speaking, picking up where our Lord leaves off. And the, the Holy Ghost has been with them, the Catholic Church ever since, and will be with the Catholic Church until the end of the world. Of course, he's invisible. He's only very rarely visible like uh, the Pentecost itself. When he came down in a very visible audible, the, like the sound, the rumbling sound like thunder, and then visible in the flames of fire on, on each of the apostles. Um, it's, but it's rare that the Holy Ghost is visible, but he is with his church. And that's why our Lord says, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives you, I give you peace. Uh, it's a spiritual peace, not a worldly peace. The worldly peace can be shattered by the Third World War, for instance, any moment. But the spiritual peace will survive even the Third World War. The bombs can be falling, but if I'm in a state of grace, I'm not excessively worried. If it's my, my moment to die, well, I'll die. And if it's not my moment to die, I won't die. And then our Lord says, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. That's very important, obviously. Uh, we can think of the way, the way things are going, not only the, the, the approach of the Third World War, it is approaching. It, both Russia and the America are preparing for it, and European nations probably also. And it's, it, it, it's, it does look like happening. We don't know the calendar once again, but it will come. But our Lord says, let not your heart be afraid, nor trouble, nor let it be afraid. You have heard that I said to you, I go away and I come unto you. He will come with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Trinity, uh, each of the three persons is always with any one of them when it's an action amongst, uh, in the world amongst uh, human beings. And our Lord says, um, if you love me, you will indeed be glad. The apostles love our Lord and they're very sorry to be losing him. He's very sorry to be saying that he's going away. But our Lord says, if you really love me, if you understood what I am doing and why I'm doing it, why I'm leaving you, so that the Holy Ghost will come. But he wouldn't come if, if I was still here. If you love me, you would be glad because I go to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it comes to pass, so that when it comes to pass, you may believe. Uh, they might think, the Apostle might think, that if this is the um, final, uh, our Lord is speaking at the Last Supper, he's speaking 50 days before Pentecost. This, this Gospel is taken from the discourse of the Last Supper. Therefore, these are events in the future that, that he's speaking of. And um, our Lord is preparing his disciples for his departure from amongst them. He's been with them and amongst them for the last three years. They love to love him very dearly. They're going to be very shaken by the passion, by our Lord's crucifixion and death. 
and then they will be very uh, surprised by the resurrection. They will be very strengthened and consoled during the 40 days until the ascension. They've been praying with the Mother of God in the circle for the last 10 days. Now the Holy Ghost is coming and filling them with strength and with light. Uh, he's also uh, making the apostles in, uh, he's filling, he's making the apostles uh, impeccable. That's what the, the church teaches. The, the, the commentators say that the Holy Ghost because of the verse in the Gospel of Luke, the Holy Ghost is making the apostles uh, impeccable and infallible. It's a very special, very, very special grace necessary to found the church. The apostles are going to be protected and inspired in a very special way and so that the church can be founded. The twelve apostles will lay the foundations of the church all over the world, all over the then known world, to St. Thomas died in India, where you could still visit the shrine the, where he died, a martyr. And um, St. Peter and Paul, St. Peter and Paul died in Rome, of course. St. Andrew died in Greece and so on. So they were all over the world. And um, they were infallible. Our Lord, of course, is infallible. And the apostles are, uh, our Lord by nature, by his divine nature, is infallible. That's absolutely impossible for our Lord to make a mistake. The apostles are by gift infallible, and this infallibility establishes a body of doctrine, which is what's behind, which is what is the ordinary magisterium of the church, with the extraordinary magisterium at its summit. But it, all of it goes back to our Lord and the apostles. They, they, they establish the body of doctrine, which carried down the church, handed down the church, that's the meaning of tradition, handed down through the, both the bishops in particular, the popes and the bishops, that's what makes the church infallible in doctrine. It's not a creation of the pope. Infallibility is not a creation of the popes. And the doctrine is not invented by the popes. The doctrine, when the popes teach infallibly, it's not a, a doctrine uh, invented by the popes. It's something that they have received which they are handing on. Um, I will not now speak many things with you, our Lord is, 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 because he's about to be crucified. The Prince of the world is coming, and in me he has not got anything. The, the, the Prince, the, Satan has no grip on our Lord, and our Lord is going to conquer him. But that the world, the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father has given me command, so do I. He's just said that the Father is greater than he is. The Father, of course, God the Father, is greater than our Lord in his human nature. Not greater than him, but absolutely equal to our Lord in his divine nature. Therefore, that our Lord has been uh, teaching, has been living for 33 years on earth, He's been teaching for three years on earth. He's ready to die at the end of these 33 years in order to uh, transmit, to launch the doctrine of the church and to launch the church. And the actual moment of launching the church comes with Pentecost. That's the importance of Pentecost. Some many years ago, well, some years ago, maybe it's about 20, 30 years ago now, uh, some of you may remember a number of you may not remember, but, uh, because you never knew, but the, when America had an important space program, there were these huge rockets that were prepared at Cape Canaveral in Florida, and which had a capsule on top, which was inhabited by human beings, three or even seven at a time. And that was the space program, and these capsules would, 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 would be lifted off uh, Cape Canaveral, and then launched into the launched into orbit and then in orbit would circuit around the earth for a day or a few days or a few weeks, even several months. Um, that space program has died down, but uh, there was a time when there were quite frequent uh, la launchings of rockets and it, they were on television. And one saw the, these, these huge, huge rockets being prepared for weeks at least, if not maybe months, I don't know, 
but it, the, the, the parts of the rocket were brought to, to, to the launching pad, they were all put together, then the, obviously they were fueled, lastly the astronauts climbed in. It was a lot of preparation, complicated preparation, detailed and very careful preparation. One error, like with the um, launching of, I forget the name of the rocket, but with the rocket which blasted off and then there was some fault and within a minute it was spinning around in space, tossing around and then fell back into the ocean. Um, that was a disaster. And it was just one thing that went wrong. Uh, so the rocket has to be very carefully prepared in all its details so that nothing will go wrong. Otherwise it's going to, it's going to be a, a crash like it was Challenger, that was it. It was called Challenger, that particular rocket. And it crashed with seven people killed, including two women including a mother and children. Was she proud of herself when she crashed into the ocean? Was she was making a career as an astronaut. And, and there she is crashing into the ocean, or orphaning her children, at least two children. My oh my, how foolish the modern world can be. In any case, uh, the, then I remember the, the, on, on television, uh, it was quite a thing to watch in those, those times. You would have the, what was called the countdown. And you would have uh, 10, 9, 8, down through to 3, 2, 1, 0. At 0, we have ignition. We have ignition. And the, the, they, they, lit, they put a match to the rocket and it began to burn. And you saw the tremendous fort, the, the fire spewing out from beneath the, the hot gases spewing out from beneath the rocket and then very very slowly it began to lift and it lifted faster and faster and then you watched it going up up into towards the sky and then it was you couldn't you couldn't watch you couldn't watch it any longer and then it went into orbit around the earth it's comparable to the launching of the church the church our lord has taken three years to prepare the church to prepare the apostles to prepare the disciples to prepare his mother to prepare, uh, to prepare the Jews, to prepare, to make sure that when the ch church had ignition, when the Holy Ghost at Pentecost came down and put ignition, put a match to the church, and and it, it, the, the fire was visible, not quite as visible as a rocket, but still, the fire was visible, 12 tons of fire. And then the, and then the church began to lift off, it's comparable. And the church began to lift off, and soon it was in orbit. Uh, it was uh, in, in orbit, going around the earth, and the, mar the, uh, the, the martyrdoms began. Within a few years, uh, the, the Holy Ghost will have been about 30, uh, 33, the, the year of the crucifixion of our Lord. The martyrdoms in Rome began in earnest, Martyrdom of Stephen was, was sooner than that, but the martyrdoms in Rome began in earnest under, Rome, under Nero in the 60s, and um, then the, by then the church was the church was fragile and frail during those first years. But our Lord and the Holy Ghost was watching over it. Our Lady was watching over it. She was there to help the apostles. But it began with Pentecost. Pentecost is the moment when, after 10 days of meditating in the cenacle with Our Lady, around, around Our Lady, the Apostles, as Our Lord has said, you stay in Jerusalem, uh, surround my mother, and the Holy Ghost will come upon you, sure enough. And that's when the church had ignition and lifted off the launching pad. And um, ever since, the church is now, hmm, the church is, you might say, you might, the, the, obviously the, the capsules, the space capsules, were designed so that they would, uh, they had a, had a space, it was an actual space vehicle, which was able to glide. The first capsules were mere capsules. They just had a parachute and they landed in the ocean when they came back. Usually the astronauts did come back, usually most times they came back. Occasionally it was a disaster. And then, but after the capsules, it was a whole space, a whole stubwing plane that, that glided through the upper atmosphere and then came into land at very great speed and so on and so on. Um, but sometimes, the, the, the one, I remember one, one, one case, there was just a tile that flew off the uh, space, uh, the, 
covering of the space plane. And that was, that was enough for the tremendous heat of the friction coming back through the universe for the, for the, uh, uh, the whole space plane to be burned to pieces, to be destroyed by fire, by the heat. Because one time it flew off when, when, when the, the, the rocket launch was launched. The, the church today, the church today crashing, the church today, tires flying off in all directions, uh, overheating, uh, people losing their minds, uh, many people losing their faith. Uh, it's comparable to a space, a space plane uh, crashing. But of course, the, the church is in trouble, but the church will, will come through. The Holy Ghost is still with the church. The, Holy, the, the church is still handing down the infallible doctrine, the doctrine, the true doctrine is still being handed down. It's not being, it is by the Romans, no. By the Romans, many times have flown off, flown off the church in Rome. And the Romans are not teaching the truth. They're teaching part of the true doctrine, but they're also teaching a lot of false doctrine because of modernism. So you can't trust what they're teaching. And, and, and what they do, what they're in effect doing, is to harness, they tell some truths, but the truths are harnessed to the lies. The, 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 the truths that the, the, true, the, the true religion centered on God is still there in part, but it's harnessed to the new false religion which is centered on man. man the Romans are making man take the place of God, which is appalling, absolutely appalling. But they're so blinded by modern times that they can't see what they're doing. It's, are they guilty? Well, yes they are. Because it's, it's not possible that God is not offering them all the light they need to straighten out as his officials at the head of the church, they're being, they're being surely offered the light they need to see straight and to guide the church straight. If they're not guiding the church straight, which they're not doing, then they are refusing grace of God. They're, they're refusing grace which logically God must be giving them as the officials of his church. Therefore they're not innocent. They're not innocent, but they are blind. They're guiltily blind. And so, and, and so many souls in confusion, the whole world in darkness, because the Catholic Church is the light of the world. And if that light is dark, and if that salt loses its savour, then there's corruption. And if the light is dark, then there's complete confusion and corruption. And that's what we see all around us today. Yet, the Holy Ghost is still there. And the, there's interesting words earlier in the Gospel, um, at that time Jesus said to his sons, if anyone love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. In other words, the test of any real love of God is keeping his commandments. It's not uh, great manifestations of, of devotion or all this or that or the other. It's keeping the commandments. And obviously there are some souls that keep the commandments better than some non-Catholics that keep the commandments better than some Catholics, just like men are taller than women, but some women are taller than some men. The Catholics are closer to God, but a number of non-Catholics are closer to God than a number of, of not-so-good Catholics. So, um, my father will come, love him, we will come, we will make our abode with him. There are people outside the church who keep the commandments, and, and several many of the commandments, and if they keep them all by, by following the light of their conscience, they're as good as better than many Catholics. At last today, many, so many Catholics in confusion, and it, it, coming from above. It's mysterious that God is allowing this to go on and on, but we, we are resigned to what God wants. God does know what He's doing, so we accept what, he, what God chooses, and we wait for Him to intervene. And my Father will come, love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our abode in him. That's the state of grace. He that loves me not, keepeth not my words. He that loves me not may say that he loves me. The Romans undoubtedly say, these Roman modernists, the Montes in Rome, undoubtedly say that they love God. They say they're practicing the true religion. 
But they're not keeping the commandments. No to them in the first commandment. They're not putting God, they're not loving God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength, with all their mind, because they're, they're establishing in the church a man-centered religion. Um, and the word which you have heard is not mine, but the fathers who sent me. That's very important. Because, in other words, what we would say today, our Lord is not on an ego trip. He's not seeking his own interests. He's not interested in setting himself up as the master of a new religion. He's interested in transmitting what he's received from the Father. He says it again at the end. That the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father has given me commandment, that is what I do. You know, as our Lord is emphasizing that he's teaching what the Father has told him to teach, what he's received from the Father, as, as man. As God, he's entirely equal with the Father. And this doctrine comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He's coming through Jesus as man. So, Jesus says, I am less than the Father, I am as man less than the Father. As, as man, I receive what I'm transmitting from the Father. It's his doctrine, it's his commands. I am doing what the Father commands, I am teaching what the Father commands. Think for a moment. If our Lord, who is God and man, if our Lord as man is doing what God commands, how much more must the Pope do what God commands? The Pope is not at liberty to change the religion. The conciliar Popes, ever since Vatican II, have been changing the religion. It's man-centered, it's uh, humanistic, it is um, much easier, it's a religion which is much easier, much less demanding. It reaches out to modern man, sure enough, but then it throws himself, instead of throwing the rope from the bank to the drowning man, it jumps into the river and drowns with the drowning man, which is useless. The, the, the new religion is useless. It's not going to save souls. It's not capable of saving souls. Unless it still carries enough of the old religion with it, in which case it's the old religion of saving souls and not the new religion. The, the true religion to save souls must be centered on God, on God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It can't be centered on man. You're reaching out to man, but you've got to save him, you've got to pull him out of this world, which is the world of flesh and the devil, where the world, this world is under the prince, uh, um, the prince of this world, named by our Lord, is Satan. Satan is in control, just look around him today. So, people have to be pulled out of this by the true religion, by doing what the Father says, by following what our Lord teaches. Our Lord himself is not, is, is, is not, he's not establishing his religion, he's establishing God's religion. He is as man amongst men transmitting what he's received from the Father. How much more must the Popes receive from the Father? How can the Popes get into their heads, Paul VI especially, how could he get into his head that he had the standing, the right, the ability to completely change the religion in order to fit modern man. And he ruined it in trying to make it fit modern man. Because man, modern man is turned away from God. You can't adapt things to man, modern man without turning away from God. And so he's, uh, 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 our Lord says, um, well, the word which you have heard is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. I'm not teaching you what, what pleases me or what I like or what... I am simply here by the Incarnation as a human being amongst you to transmit what I have heard from the Father, what I have with God since eternity. And this is, this is the true religion. And this is, what, and this is how our Lord is preparing the rocket on the launching pad and then today, this very day, we commemorate the Holy Ghost coming down and the, the, the Apostles are set on a fire. We read in the Acts of the Apostles, the moment the Holy, Holy Ghost withdraws, the moment there's no longer the tongues of fire and the rumbling and the presence of the Holy Ghost, they burst out and they immediately begin preaching to the crowds. And that's when the crowds, by miracle, hear the Apostles speaking, speak, speaking in their own tongues. This is a special gift of the beginning of the church. It's not like the Charismatics. No, 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 no. If the Charismatics speak in strange tongues, it's often the devil. Uh, there was uh, various cases, I'm sure, more than one case, 
of somebody attending a charismatic meeting, some stranger from some strange land, and he hears somebody babbling in tongues, he, he hears it's his own tongue by chance. The devil made a mistake and began, made, made somebody begin to babble in the tongue of somebody who was actually there. He understood every word and it was all blasphemies, blasphemies and horrors. He understood every word. And this is everybody now in wonder in front of people babbling in tongues. No, 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 no. At the beginning of the church was quite different. The beginning of the church was a necessity, a miracle, enabling the apostles to speak in, either from themselves in a foreign tongue or speak in their own tongue in a way that's understood by miracle as, as their own tongue by people listening. But that was a miracle necessary for the beginning of the church. But once the church again, once the church had established itself, these miracles from the, the beginning were no longer needed. Once the satellite is in, once the spacecraft is in orbit, it's no longer blasting its engines. It's, it's the, the, the initial thrust into orbit, the gravity it slings it around the Earth, and it no, no longer needs to, except it needs to adjust its position. Minor adjustments, but it's not. It's rocket thrust no longer no longer thrust. Ah my, today's church, today's church. My dear friends, um, somebody misunderstood something I said last time I was here. I was saying, they said, are you against com coming to the resistance mass? No, 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 no. What I said was something like, I congratulate you that do come because you've got so many influences against you. So many reasons not to come. You've got so many alternatives which seem to be more authoritative and more respectable than a, a public library in Earlsville. But what I was saying is, I congratulate you that you do come regularly despite everything that's pulling you away. I wasn't saying stay away, far from it. I congratulate you if you don't stay away, that you do. You see, by the grace of God, you see that this is where you need to come in order to be sure of a true sacrifice of the Mass with sermons and with people chatting afterwards who are not sliding as the society is now sliding. My dear friends, pray for the society because it has this very important meeting in, in the middle of July, that's now only two months away, when the Shabira General is elected once every 12 years. And it's the only opportunity that the society, as a society, has to change its superior journal. You might have a revolution and somebody trying to take over, but if you once you once you start the revolutionary process, the structures are broken, or they're seriously they're seriously weakened from then on. But the, the, the election in July is awful. There does need to be a change of the superior journal. He's been there for 24 years, and that's, it's, it's not normal that the one man should be there for so long, and it's, sure enough, it's not been good that there be this. Then pray for the society, that the society has been sliding, that it stops sliding, and that it get back to the path traced out by Archbishop Lefebvre, the great, the great man of God for this confusion and disturbance in today's church. And by yourselves, of course, pray always the rosary. Our Lady is always asking for us to pray the rosary. Uh, and if she, if she, if she said to us, you may have heard me say before, if she said, to us, you will get to heaven and you will save the church by walking around the building on your hands three times every day, that is what will save the church. It's not what she says. It doesn't make sense because it's nonsense. That's it's not what she says. What she says is pray the rosary, which does make sense. It's a humble prayer. That's a very important point. It's a very simple prayer, but it's not stupid. And um, it occupies, the rosary occupies the mouth, the, the most mobile things of a human being. His mouth, his thoughts, and his fingers. Some people smoke just to keep the fingers occupied because they've got twitchy fingers. Well, the rosary occupies the fingers, the praying occupies the mouth, and the meditating occupies the mind. And then if you walk up and down, the other mobile things, which are the feet, it occupies the feet as well. Therefore, the rosary makes a lot of sense. Given human nature, given the way a human being is built, the rosary makes a lot of sense. And it concentrates us on the man-made, the God-made religion, not the man-made religion. The religion is centered on God. 
15 mysteries of our divine Lord always pointing towards, to pointing towards her. Pray the rosary, my dear friends, and if at all possible, if it's reasonable and possible, pray 15 mysteries a day. That's the surest way of keeping one's head above water today because the world is very slippery and very dangerous for the purpose of saving one's soul. It's easy to lose one's footing and to begin sliding with the great, the powerful current being, which is sweeping away so many souls to eternal damnation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.